uh, October 13th, we're going to be shifting gears to Beowulf, which is the final piece that we do in the Anglo-Saxon unit, and it is a far more interesting piece than anything we did with the Anglo-Saxon exile poetry, in my opinion at least. Now you've gained some insight into what it's like to be a warrior from your study of the seafarer and the wanderer. Um, those two warriors were ones who had been separated from their community for various reasons. The seafarer was exiled by choice. Um, the adventure of invading new lands, I guess, uh, outweighed his longing for home while he was gone and of course the wanderer who was the saddest story in the world all his kin has been killed his king has been killed he is searching for a place to belong he has no place and um you know that poem also talks about a lot of wisdom that comes if you are someone who lives a long life in the anglo-saxon period as that was not common uh to happen um the wife's lament was the perspective of a wife of a warrior not a warrior himself um, today's work, you're going to see that I, that I will have officially have posted in a moment once I attach this video, is to complete a Google form in one sitting. I know on the assignment that it will not save on some background and context of Beowulf. So way back when, if I go back to week one here, um, oh, that's in the wrong order. Let's move that. Um, way back when we had the opportunity to do some background notes on the Anglo-Saxon period, okay? This particular assignment had you read some selections from the textbook as well as uh, to fill in some notes. I don't know if you could think back to this. I know it's been a while, but all of this is still connected. This background information applied as much to Beowulf as it did to the exile poetry that we studied. Additionally, we did take some notes on the um, let me scroll back here. On the Anglo-Saxon history through a pair deck, okay? And you guys completed that either with me or with, um, you did it uh, from remote learning. Um, all this information on the birth of Britain, where it's located, the original inhabitants, the people that kind of were in and out of that island, if you could see here. The Sutton Who burial is gonna come up again. Um, I made reference to it here. Um, I didn't mention this specifically, but a huge burial ground in Sutton Hoo where there were the remains of, uh, I guess, a burial for a king. Lots of cool artifacts from that, including the text of the Anglo-Saxon period um, is linked to that as well. Um, mead halls are going to come up again. The fact that these stories, stories were told by Scots or traveling poets in the mead hall to entertain warriors is all going to come back up um, as we discuss Beowulf. Um, so if you could think back to some of that stuff, it's going to be meaningful. Beowulf is also going to be a piece in which we study a lot of the mix of pagan and Christian elements. And we'll watch a video uh, either in person or uh, I'll post it for my remote students um, and that, that talks about some of the theories behind the Beowulf author. Okay. All right. So back to today's work. Um, here we go. Scroll way back up. So today I have, uh, you're going to be doing some research, okay? You're going to click on a Google form. This Google form is going to ask you for your information right here. Uh, make sure you get class period right, especially my cohort are kids, um, because it's easier to grade that way when you're, I can organize you according to class period. You're going to see um, some uh, various prompts and links that you're going to click on that will open in a new tab that will um, provide you with the information you need. In essence, I think you can cut and paste, um, and that's fine. Just don't cut and paste like a whole article. I so really look through it, isolate it. Some of the stuff is not detailed. And if you cut and paste, just don't blindly do so. Like think about what you're putting down. Uh, but you do have that flexibility. I have four categories for us today. Um, the Anglo-Saxon warrior culture, the Sutton Who Burial Site in Beowulf. So you'll see this article here about the Sutton Who Burial Site. I just made reference to a moment ago. It's kind of really, I'm pulling all this stuff out. I actually have been to the British Museum, um, which is, I did not at the time in college appreciate all that was there. Um, I hope I could only go back. <laughs> um, we're going to be talking about um, not elegies, you know, the, the poems that we read before were elegies, they were poems that mourn the loss of someone or something. In this case, we're dealing with an epic poem, and so I will ask you about the difference between the two here, okay, because Beowulf is in fact an epic poem. Um, and then the poetics and language of Beowulf, some more traits about an epic poem. Kenning, we've talked about them briefly. 
um, in the Anglo-Saxon Riddle Pair Deck. Uh, you were asked to make reference to kennings in your worksheet questions for the Wanderer, the Wife's Lament. And Sejora was talked about in my background, especially to the Wife's Lament. You saw it in the Wanderer too, but I hadn't talked about it. And um, we will not see that big space in the lines in Beowulf, but we will see that the natural rhythm will pause there in a place where punctuation has been made in the modern translation of the text. And lastly, an overview of Beowulf, um, just to kind of get you ready. Um, once you're done with that, I should have evidence in the Google form that it's done. Again, as a reminder, you have to complete this in one sitting. It will not save. Um, there are several announcements down here I'd like to make reference to um, for the moment. Um, unit three vocab exercises and quiz for cohort a you will do that on thursday of this week i believe that date is october 15th and cohorts b and r will do that friday october 16th um cohort r you're going to be reminded via google Remi i'm sorry via remind to participate in a live review game for extra credit it'll be within the first 10 minutes of the class period normally scheduled time. So look for that and participate to earn some extra points. Also cohort R, there are no Google Meets this week because there was a modified schedule due to the Monday school closure. Please email me with any and all questions. Lastly, my gradebook is pretty updated with the exception of two things, the Beowulf Anticipation Guide that had been assigned to you either Thursday or Friday depending on your cohort and the essay that should be uploaded to turnitin.com on the emotional impact of exile. Um, all the working parts were uploaded. It is essential that if you make up any work, um, which you can do through this Friday without any late penalty with the exception of the essay, um, that will receive a late penalty given the number of days we worked on it. Um, you can turn in that other work because I feel like it's been such a whirlwind of figuring out things and how to be organized these first few weeks. Um, if you make up any missing assignment, you need to send me an email at at hamiltonschools.org. I'm not just going to be able to go regularly back to see who did what from the first few weeks. So please don't hesitate to take a look at your portal. Look at the comments in the portal. Comments are also on your Google uh, in Google Classroom if your assignment was submitted uh, as an assignment there um, in the private comments section try to be very detailed uh, to help students. All right, reach out to me, please. And I hope you guys have a great day. Get ready to start some Beowulf uh, videos and, and even the introduction to the reading tomorrow when you come to class later this week. If you're in person, we're going to be doing vocabulary on one of those days and then continuing with our Beowulf study. Um, yeah, okay. And if you're remote, I will post uh, readings uh, where we're at.